Today, we crown the 2021 NASCAR Pinty Series champion right here on TSN. The drive to the Pinty Series Championship has come to Delaware Speedway. This is the Pinty's Fall Brawl, and Adam, this is going to be a slugfest. I expect nothing less. Let's have at it. I'm Dave Bradley. He's Adam Ross. Both Clinton Jeffrey and Todd Lewis are trackside patrolling the pits for us here today. But it's 150 laps, and it's going to be hard at it right from the drop of the green. We've got 21 drivers. They are buckled up, ready to go racing. Let's get this show going. And let's have a quick look at the point standings. We see that LP Dumoulin now holds a seven-point lead over Alex Tagliani. And with two back-to-back -back wins, DJ Kennington has a big head of steam. Don't count out the 51 of Andrew Ranger in fourth as well. I know it's been a dogfight throughout the top 10, but I also know Trayton Lapsovich, the driver of that number 20, is a lock for Justin's Rookie of the Year honor. Now I can say it's been a lot of fun watching that young man drive that car all season long. We knew he was going to be solid on the ovals, but what's been really surprising is how competitive he's been on the road and street circuits all in 2021. He's been amazing to watch, Dave, but these drivers are itching to get at it. Let's get this Pinty's Fall Brawl going. Drivers, start your Thanks to the team from Pinty's for getting things going here this afternoon. And let's take a quick look at the Watson Building Supply starting lineup. Two notable absences here. Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22 GM Paye Chevrolet will not start today's race due to actions from the previous race. And the number eight of Shea Gemmel will not start because of the damage suffered in the Quick Quick 125. Yeah, it's a, it's a hectic day to get all this racing in. These teams have had time to work on the race cars, but as you can see as we look through the grid, they're not all as pretty as they were when we started this championship weekend here, Dave, and it all comes down to this 150 laps here this afternoon. Well, it has been such an intense weekend here at Delaware Speedway, and the track itself there's a lot of room to race, but really when push comes to shove, getting hard into those corners, trying to protect that inside lane, there's a lot of bumping and rubbing. And it does come to a point where, where the easiest way to get to where you want to go is to use a little bit of front bumper, but this racetrack can be very treacherous. There's not a lot of escape room. As we look at the back straight away here, there's walls on the inside, there's walls on the outside. Big story we're watching is the points race, Clinton. Well, guys, I can tell you that LP and this whole WeatherTech Dodge team have their game faces on. They are uber focused on today's race, and they feel pretty good. The 42-year-old will start 11 today, and if he can finish in the top two, he'll clinch his third NASCAR championship. What a change in fortune it has been for Alex Tagliani. Coming into the last three races, leading the championship by 11 points. Now he trails by seven. Major repairs done to the car just to prepare for this race. They start deep in the field. They'll hope for the best. The other car to watch, the 17 of DJ Kennington. He's won back-to-back -back races here at Delaware Speedway. Only 12 points away from the championship lead he's gunning for his third title not only that Todd this is his home track he loves this place and he loves putting on a show for the fans who have seen him grow up here behind the wheel of a race car you just got a peek of the 74 Kevin Lacroix dropping to the back of the field they have chosen to go to a backup car for this race it cost him his starting spot he will start 19th this car pulls off. It is Trayton Lapsovich and Brandon Watson, the 20 and the 64, who will lead them off of turn number four in the green flag waves. We're underway in the Pinty's Fall Brawl. Martin from Ole Mill waving the green flag over the field, and you see that bright sunshine, Dave. It makes the cars look beautiful. It's a big challenge for these race car drivers going through turns one and two. Now you can see on that quick onboard shot of DJ Kennington, we got trouble early on in turn number four a number of cars spin you saw the nose i believe that was the 36 of cole powell there you have larry jackson the 61 of brent weller and the 19 of glenn Styers also involved larry jackson didn't look to sustain damage we watched this going down into the corner and That, that sort of tells the story, does it? You know, close quarters racing here at the start of this race, but... That's a big wow. hit. Alex Tagliani. Clinton? 
Well, problems with Sam Fellows, he got into that one. You can see they had damage all over the car. And then if you look here, the left front of Cole Powell, they've got problems here. Looks like a control arm or a ball joint has taken Powell out of the 36 car early here today. You can tell from the haste from which they get out of the car how happy they are. Cole Powell is not happy, and I can't imagine Alex Tagliani is either. He has brought this 18 machine behind pit wall. Came into this race second in points. As a matter of fact, came into the final three races with a comfortable lead in the point standings. Todd? The right rear is the focus right now for the 18 team. Some contact out on the track. You can see the body work that's been damaged. They're checking the braces underneath as well. Also looking at the right front. So a lot of our series regulars involved in these mishaps. Tell you who wasn't. Brandon Watson, the driver that NTN bearings. Leland Industries number 64. And you can see some damage to the nose of the Moto Limite number 52 of Alex Gannett. He was the initial car to get into the 36 of Cole Powell. Everybody makes it through turns one and two. Down the back straightaway, they'll go side by side, still battling for the lead. TJ Kennington in the four spot. We ride on board with Pratt Taylor. Andrew Ranger diving in underneath the 80 of Donald Teach as the top two still side by side. Trayton Lapsovich in the quick, quick RGC number 20, making that outside group work. Brandon Watson with only a couple of starts under his belt in the NASCAR Pinty series, but he's acclimated himself well to these race cars. And they are a different feel from the cars that he's normally driven, both late model, super late model as well. These cars tend to float a little bit more. Way to work, clear by high. Alan Pinson Hotel and Trayton Lasovich. He's clear by half a car length, but Brandon Watson isn't done digging just yet. You can see Watson running a much lower line off of turn number four that allows him to get the nose almost alongside Lapsovich. Lapsovich had a dominant car just two races ago here at Delaware Speedway before a last corner bump and run by DJ Kennington relegated him to second spot. And Lapsovich once again flexing his muscle back at the front of the field. I talked to him before today's race, and I'm like, how much do you like this place? Because drivers have favorites when it comes to tracks. He says, I've been here in a late model. I really like how racy this track can get. And I think the changes, the bumps, the ele little elevation dips around the track, and you can see Kevin Lacroix in the 74 going through those. A driver like Trayton Lapsovich, who is constantly working in the car, working his feet, working his hands, he'd enjoy that challenge. Quick ride on board, your new points leader in the WeatherTech Dodge, LP Jumelay. You see, he's comfortably sitting there mid-pack. All he has to do is finish seventh or better here today, no matter what happened to the 18 to the 17. If LB Dumoulin finds that magic number of seven or better, he will be your NASCAR Pinty Series champion. Has to be a stressful day for LB Dumoulin because normally we see him at the front battling for the lead, battling amongst the leaders. He's deep in the field right now. We saw what can happen with Alex Tagliani when you run in that middle part of the field. It's not always pleasant. If you're starting to turn up the pressure, though, the Leland number 64 of uh, Brandon Watson, who's all over the back of the Justin's Rookie of the Year, the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. Funny to see two rookies and a veteran, DJ Kennington, in their shadow as well. So Kennington just sort of hanging back, seeing how these two rookies play together at the front of the field. A couple more veterans right behind them. Donald Teach from Bois Chatel, Quebec, and we are under yellow. Caution is displayed. Second time under caution here in the Pinty's Fall Brawl at Delaware Speedway, and it is for a spinning number 61 of Brett Weller in the Ryobi Rigid. That was a dodge coming into today. Clinton is in the pits. Well, Cole Powell, you're out of this one early. Uh, a horrible break. We barely even got the engines fired. What happened? It's 150 laps. It's lap one. I don't know why why you're diving it in like that. I don't even know who he is, but it's not our day with racing. Uh, tons and tons of work these guys did, and I didn't even get to show anything for it. So it's the highs and lows of racing, I guess. Thanks, Cole. 
disappointment written all over the fence. You can see some sparks from the 18 of Alex Tagliani, but the good news, he's back on track, able to collect some points. We'll be back with more from Delaware. This NASCAR on TSN broadcast from Delaware Speedway is brought to you by Fast Eddie Speedwear, combustion culture collection available at fasteddiespeedwear.com. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By General Tire, the exclusive tire of the NASCAR Pinty Series. And by Pinty's, making great food fun. We prepare for another restart. Trayton Loxovich in the number 20 on the inside. Brandon Watson in the 64 alongside. See if Watson can hold on to that outside groove as the 20 of Lapsovich did for about five laps after that last restart we had. The preferred group very much the bottom side here at this half mile. Keep in mind your game plan if you're DJ Cannington or Andrew Ranger or Trayton Lapsovich is to get out and lead all the laps. That's the only shot they've got. The challenge is when three drivers in the top four all have that same plan, it's not going to work. And, and you're hoping the other driver has bad luck. So you need the 47 to have a really miserable afternoon. And so far, touch wood, so good for the 47 of LB Dumoulin. Andrew Ranger and Brandon Watson, just a little kiss side to side out of turn number four. They continue to battle off of turn two. Watson gets a little bit loose. He'll try to get back to the bottom. It's Joe Chisholm Jr., the spotter for Andrew Ranger, coaching him through that pass around Brandon Watson. As we look a little bit deeper in the field, there is your points leader, the WeatherTech number 47 of LB Dumoulin. Does have some damage to the nose. As he moves to the inside of the TCB trailers, Fast Eddie Speedwear, number three of Brett Taylor. Right behind them, the APC number seven. That's Pete Shepard, the third. They've not had the day they would have liked, but the car looks clean. He's got all four corners on it. He's still got a shot out there. Teammate to Cole Powell out of the Dave Jacobs Racing Stable is Pete Shepard in the APC number seven. And there he goes on the inside. Taylor Owego there through turn number four. That allows Pete Shepard to get on through. Dexter Stacy in the 92. He'll try to follow Pete through the opening on the inside. Looks like he'll be successful. Once again, sporting the Every Child Matters logo on the hood of the 92 at the AHR stable, Dexter Stacy. And of course, we have to congratulate the winners of the naming contests. Quickwick quick, holding that contest to name the mascot. Burnswell. Bernie. It's a great name. It fits so well. Bernie the Caveman. And of course, the winners in attendance here today as honored guests of Quick Quick. It'd be fun to go to the races and be a guest of Frank from Quick Quick. <laughs> like he's always happy. They do have a lot of fun. We should also tip our hat to the driver of the number 64 here today, champion in the APC Late Model Series, picking up that championship on the final night of the season as DJ Kennington slides up the racetrack in one and two. Opens the door for Andrew Ranger. Ranger up the inside in the miles for Migraine 51. Brandon Watson won that championship by a single point over Trayton Lapsovich. Just amazing. He knew he had to pass one more car at the end of that race, and he did so, winning the championship. The only repeat champion in APC Series history. Tell you what, Kevin Lacroix is on a mission right now. He started at the back. He is carving his way through this field. And you mentioned it off the top of the show. A backup car rolled out for the bumper-to-bumper Lacroix tuning, folks, the number 74. So no wear and tear on that car as far as earlier races go or any damage goes. It was a brand new piece rolling off the trailer. Ranger still battling with DJ Kennington. Kennington trying to hold down the 51, but you can see there he just lost the nose of the car a little bit. It allowed Ranger to get around as they put a lap on Glenn Styers from Oshweek in Ontario. Styers, a new member into the Canadian Motorsports Hall of Fame, is doing very, very well in his return to asphalt racing. He's Picking up speed with the laps that he gets under his belt, just remembering what it's like to not have to kick the back end out like you're running a sprint car on dirt. 
And if you've been an Asphalt fan for a long, long time, you might remember Glenn Styers, the all orange late models that he raced at Flamborough Speedway and then specials all throughout Ontario. Good look at Alex Gannett there in the 52 as he puts the heat on the 64 of Brandon Watson. You see a four car train now all nose to tail. That is from second on back to fifth. We mentioned that at the opening of the show. When you close in on a driver, sometimes you need to use your bumper a little bit, slide them up the track, and you can see the damage to the front end of Alex Gannett from doing that to Cole Powell earlier in the race. There could be a number of things that caused that, but we know there was contact with Powell. Here. Look at the inside. He backed out. And that's just the word to Andrew Ranger, the DJ Cannington is starting to go fishing in the Castrol Edge Dodge, poking the nose underneath the miles for migraines. Number 51 of Ranger, the Rick Ware Racing entry. Clear by one now, clear by one. There he gets the all clear, but interesting to see Gannett and how well he's adapted to this speedway. No doubt taking notes from his teammate out of the Rick Ware Racing stable, Andrew Ranger. So Ranger's been quick. Gannett finished with a top five last time out. Alex Gannett's a very good stock car racer. He was in the top five in points at certain times this season. So I would have to say, wow, Brandon Watson. Oh, they go around. Kennington goes around. Watson does as well in the 64. They collect the 52 of Alex Gannett. And Gannett overheating. You can see this steam coming up. The water spraying on the windshield. Tire down on the 17 of DJ Kennington. Caution flies. So those cars have to get moving before the leader comes through. So let's have a look. I thought it might be my eyes deceiving me. Watson spun out and he collected DJ on his way. Narrowly missing the end of pit wall. Kevin Lacroix doing a nice job. LP Dumlin. Let's watch this. It's like Watson just got a little bit low down on the apron and the car pushed up, making that contact with the 17. Kennington heads down pit lane, though. You can see that left rear tire flapping as DJ Kennington arrives at his pit stall. Pry bars underneath the car to make room for that jack. Couple of pumps, the car is going now up in the air. They'll do a little maintenance on the front. They'll replace that left rear tire and then make sure that everything is good to go for DJ Kennington. Savvy veteran that he is, DJ Kennington knows these races are long, anything can still happen, but he's got to be frustrated. We'll see more right after this on TSN. We're just outside of London, Ontario in Delaware, population 2,500. We can guarantee that the entire population is right here at Delaware Speedway because this is a barn burner. The Pinty's Fall Brawl as we get set for a restart. The 20 of Trayton Lapsovich alongside the 51 of Andrew Ranger. We rode on board briefly there with LP Dumoulin. That fourth starting spot is kind of a cursed place to restart. You're at the mercy of everyone around you. So you know LP Dumoulin is just hoping to get through these restarts clean and get back into his rhythm. See that car up on the outside. There is a gap down low. Now he's going to find it. So he makes his way down to the inside of the track. Great view from our aerial footage. Inside. Tight gap behind the 74 if you want it. Inside. So Joe telling Andrew Ranger that 74 is inside. There's a bit of a gap behind him if you want to come down. Clear by two on the 74. And the 74 has that car pointed in the right direction here today. Not a mark on it. He started last on the field. He's worked his way up. Now in second is Kevin McQuaw. LP Dumlin under attack from Pete Shepard in that seven machine. Shepard trying to get around him on the outside. He's going to do it. Yeah, not surprised to see LP Dumlin sort of back off a little bit. Maybe let Shepard dive in in front. They'll go single file. Now he's got Donald Teach just in behind in the white motorsports number 80. And Teach looking to prove something here today. He missed the start of the season with a broken hand. He has struggled a little bit in his return, but he's looked okay here today. 
And I don't think it makes him feel any better that Rafael Lassard won two races in that car in Donald Teach's absence earlier this season. He doesn't need any extra motivation to want to go out there and win, and that's a little bit that I'm sure is on his mind. Races every lap like it is the last one. The driver of the number 80. There you see him in a fight now with the 92 Bullies Truck Stop Chevrolet of Dexter Stacy, who floats the back end off of turn number four. But Brandon Watson continues his march up through the field. And wow. Speaking of floating the back end. And he did that without losing any ground to the 92 of Stacy. That's impressive. And we talked about Glenn Styers possibly driving it off the right rear. How about young Brandon Watson doing exactly that and keeping pace? He does what he needs to do, and when you back into the corner like he did with the tail end of the car out, you've got to drive it off the right rear to get through the rest of the turn. You, and that's something that drivers from other disciplines will say when they get behind the wheel of a NASCAR Finti Series car. These cars are a lot of fun to drive. For a driver, it puts it all back in their hands. There's no aero dependency. It's all the feel, seat of your pants kind of racing. We ride on board with Dumoulin just turning laps out there. Pete Shepard got around him in that number seven, but he hasn't driven away by any stretch. Dumoulin keeping that pack in his sights just ahead of Shepard is Andrew Ranger. Here's a tight battle. We got Donald Teague in the 80, trying to hold off the 92 of Dexter Stacy and the 64 of Brandon Watson. Dumoulin is in a good spot, sitting in fifth position right now, but even better for his chances. The fact that the 17 of DJ Kennington is back in 13th and the 18 of Alex Tagliani is having a heck of a day. He's well at the back in 18th. LB Duma will have great awareness of what's going on, where he needs to be, and, and if he needs to do something, he's got the ability to do it. But right now, I'm just so impressed with how he's able to keep that car in one piece, not put himself in any bad situations. So we stay under green. We'll be back with more in the Pinty's Fall Brawl. Welcome back to race 10 of 10 in the 2021 NASCAR Pinty Series. The final race, the Pinty's Fall Brawl, as we ride on board your race leader, the Quickwick RGC number 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. Some of the lead lap cars making their moves to get through traffic. Things have settled down, and this is, this is the part of the race where you really have to keep your equipment. You want to hold a steady pace. You don't want to lose ground to the leaders, but you can't use up too much tire and brake in trying to run that pace. We've said it time and time again today, LP Dumoulin is having his way. This is what he needs to happen to score his third career championship. See a hose set up from the right side window, blowing some cold air on the driver, keeping him cool and comfortable. We just saw DJ Kennington, if you watch the ticker go across, scored in the 13th position, so he has not been rocketing his way back through the field. He's right behind, one spot behind, in fact, TJ Renamato, the number two car, having a good run this afternoon. Yeah, he really is keeping his nose out of trouble. Already 71 laps into a 150-lap race here at Delaware Speedway. And this one has settled out a little bit more than some of the other sprint races we've seen over the course of the 2021 season. Well, with some of the incidents we've, we've had, you've had cars drop to the back. These cars up at the front sort of been here most of the day. You pick up a spot or two on a restart, settle in there. That's what we're seeing at the moment. But LP Dumoulin, we ride on board. On my break. So just being told, he's 72 laps in. Again, we have all this display. We know exactly what's going on. The driver relies on the information. They get what the spotter and the crew chief give them. Some places have a scoreboard, but here at Delaware Speedway, it's halfway down the back stretch on the, on the right. You can't possibly read that from inside the car. And, and if you listen to the spotters and some of the crew chiefs, they'll tell you where the leaders are. If, if you're a back marker, if you're trying to work your way up through the field, they'll say leader at the line, and you can sort of judge where you are on the track if you're picking up space or, or losing that track position. We know where DJ Kennington is. He is now a lap down to the field. That is not a good spot. 
as we reach the midway point of this race. 75 laps down, 75 laps to go. So what he's hoping for now is a caution, and that will put him in a free pass position in order to get that lap back. Obviously, DJ's car not reacting as well as it was early in this race where he's running comfortably inside the top three as we hit the halfway point. Dan Hawkins, the NASCAR starter with the flags crossed. When he's got the flags crossed like that, it means halfway point of the race. And there's a look at your point standings as they sit right now. So Kennington will have dropped a couple of positions. Lapsovich up to second in the 20, Ranger now in third. Still a lot of racing left to go. And again, Kevin Lacroix, man, he's been running well. Andrew Ranger, this is not a backup car for Ranger, so he has kept that car mighty clean this weekend, having some good runs. Not as good, however, as DJ Kennington with two wins in this big championship weekend event. There's a good look at the Roxton Pond Quebec native as we do have a caution, and it's for the 18 of Alex Tagliani, a flat right front tire for the Rona Viagra. Chevrolet, he slows down the back straightaway, unable to get to pit lane. Now he does, but this is going to stack the field. Alex Tagliani was many laps down, but I think this was wise. Don't make the situation worse and try to come across a green track. Wait for the yellow to come out, get to pit road, get the service he needs. Especially with that right front tire down so hard to cut across traffic with any sort of pace. So Tagliani, obviously a veteran, he's been doing this for years. Thought better of that, caution comes out and the crew goes to work. Couple of things going on right now on pit road. We look at Alex Tagliani and his crew. They're trying to figure out what, what to bungee cord together to get that car back on the track. But we've been watching Alex Gannett and Clinton Jeffrey telling us there may have been an incident between Gannett and Cool Powell. Gannett is going to look for him right now. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more on TSN. Welcome back to the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me in the booth is Adam Ross. Both Clinton Jeffrey and Todd Lewis are pit side for us here today. We have to take our hats off too, to Statsman Extraordinaire watching all the points as they play out. Bryce Turner here today. Bryce does a great job. Always makes us seem a little smarter than we actually are. <laughs> it's true, he does. In my case, that's not really an enormous effort, but I think in your case it probably is, Dave. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. we got problems on the 80. Donald Teach into the wall and now off the pace. No caution yet. We now, as I say that, the caution flag flies as Teach limps his way down the back straightaway. You can see the right side sagging. Yeah, it's just not right the way that car is sitting on the racetrack and there you see why rubbed up against the wall for quite an extended period of time. Clint, what's going on? Donald Tiege pulls the 80 car here to pit road. He's got a flat right rear and they scuffed the wall a little bit. Doesn't look like the damage is too bad, but they are going to need a new shoe on the back of the Tiege 80. So while they work, the field lines up two by two behind the pace car, and the pace car will find pit lane. Teach released and will join the back of the pack as Lapsovich and now Andrew Ranger will give it a shot from the outside groove as we go back to green. There's been a lot of drivers out there alongside Drayton Lapsovich. Nobody's really been able to contend with him, though. His car is just on rails. You can see the field sorting out now. Lacroix will slide into third spot, challenging for second on Ranger, the best battle on the track so far. And once again, LP Dumoulin just being a little bit cautious. He drifts back to sixth. Contact going down into turn number one. Lakovic all sorts of sideways as Andrew Ranger and Kevin Lacroix battle for second. Well, Lacroix's going for a win here today. He wants one badly. One only on the 2021 season when he's a favorite to win the championship coming into this year. Yeah, they had to have really high hopes coming into it. Things haven't gone entirely his way, but there's been moments of brilliance, which we always expect from Kevin Lacroix. But I'll tell you, a driver who wants a big run, Pete Shepard III in his APC number seven, 
it, by his own admission, 2021 has not been the kind of year he expects. Although he was able to turn it around at Flamborough after getting into the wall in practice in his primary car, they rolled out a backup and he worked his way up into a top five. So he has shown speed at nearly every step of the way here this season. That's almost part of the problem, though, right? Pete Shepard, he isn't happy with top fives. No. The team isn't happy with top You say that you're happy with the top five. They want to win. They're in a good spot to do it here today, sitting inside the top three, a podium position right now for the seven of Pete Shepard. But one of the stories we've been watching play out here today after an early race incident between the 52 of Alex Gannett and the 36 of Cole Powell has apparently boiled over on the infield. And we've been tracking these two drivers. Clinton Jeffrey has been keeping up to date on this one. Clinton, what's new? Well, Alex, we followed you as you walked down to talk to Cole Powell. What took place? Yeah, I mean, uh, early in the race, we kind of got in together. I have to watch a replay, but I really feel like I was the bottom of him, and I don't think his spotter told him. So he kind of tried to get a better angle on, on, uh, on the exit of the turn and spun himself on me. And as soon as I saw him try to spin, I hopped on the brakes to kind of give him the room. But just one of those racing deals, man. And then after that, he got all hot-headed and came over here. Not quite sure how he made it down here, but he wanted some. It's part of racing. It's good, man. I'm, I'm so happy with our car, with our day. We, we qualified third, finished fourth last race. We were running great. I think we were, like, train was probably quicker. We were probably second quickest out there. We were flying. We finally got our package good and ready to win a race. And then, yeah, just unfortunate stuff happened there. But it is what it is, man. He can do whatever he wants. I don't really care about it. We can go We can go outside, whatever. He's hiding right now, actually. But uh, maybe I'll see him around somewhere another time. Well, just so you know, Alex, NASCAR has escorted Cole Powell off the property, guys. He's gone for today. I think that's good for him. That's a pretty stern warning from Alex Gannett, but this could maybe tie it over into 2022. We'll keep an eye on those two drivers next year. <laughs> I'd be more worried about it spilling over to the parking lot <laughs> later today. On board with your points leader as the last tick off here in Delaware. Clear by 15 on the 74 and another 15 on the 64. We continue Delaware under control. green. Here in the Pinty's Fall Brawl at Delaware Speedway, and it has lived up to his name here today. Definitely brawls on the track and spilling over somewhat as well. Wow, Pete Shepard and Brandon Watson split Glenn Styers through three and four. They are going for it. We talked about the calm before the storm, those laps where you let things settle out. Yeah, those laps are over, Dave. Yeah, for sure. As Watson lost two spots in that one corner, and now he's going to lose possibly another. Here to your points leader in the WeatherTech.ca number 47 of LP Dumoulin. Dumoulin's had that same piece of damage at the front of his hood this entire race. Let's have a look at this. It looks like Styers breaks going into turn number three. Watson took evasive action way up on the outside, and then he's in the dirty. You can hear all the marbles kicked up underneath that car. And, and what we talk about when we say marbles is the little bits of rubber and little stones that get kicked up the track, and they all gather just outside the racing groove because all these racing tires running through the groove keep it pretty smooth, but all the little garbage and dirt and debris they call it marbles because it sounds like when you run through it, a bunch of marbles hitting the underside of your race car. Feels like it too because it feels like your car is just rolling over top of them with these slick general tires. There's a good look at your race leader, a 1.3 second lead at the front of the field. So comfortably up front now, almost two seconds as he crosses stripe, Creighton Lapsovich. Lapsovich has barely turned a wheel wrong this race, but we have seen this before. Can he hold on? He got his first career APC late battle race last night. Can he follow up with a win in the NASCAR Pinty Series here today? We should tell you, too, that one of the drivers we were watching early in this race, DJ Kennington, back on the lead lap, currently sitting in eighth position, taking advantage of some of the cautions we've seen here today. Yeah, he needs to make his way to the front of the field. He needs for some misfortune probably to fall upon LP Dumoulin. But anything can happen. We've seen that time and time again as we've got problems on the R Club 56 of Malcolm Strong. Car out of the Jim Bray Racing Stable. And it looks like Strong will find pit lane. He had damage coming into this race. Looks good. You're good. Keep going. 
So someone is concerned, and I'm not sure who, who we were listening to. LP Dumlin, our points leader, concerned that he hit something on the racetrack and it might have gone through the radiator. The spotter's saying, no, you look good. But that's what happens when you're sitting in the points lead. You start thinking about things. Every rattle, every squeak on that race car, is this the bit that's going to take me out of this race? They work to the outside of TJ Rinomato in the two. He's been on and off the lead lap all day long, but still having a solid run in that RGC Sports number two. Just outside the top 10, sitting in 11th, and that doesn't seem like much, but for TJ Rinomato, that's a big step forward here today. Welcome back to the half mile oval outside of London, Ontario. That is Delaware Speedway as we continue with the 150 lap Pinty's Fall Brawl. And things are starting to pick up at the front of the field. Brent Weller continuing to turn laps in that rigid number 61. Plenty of damage on that car, but he gets out of the way of the lead lap racers to let them settle their beefs. Pete Shepard putting the pressure on Andrew Ranger in that 51. That's a battle for the third spot. Long green flag run, too. You can see those brake rotors starting to glow with now 22 laps to go. You can see the left front brake rotor glow glowing on the Castro Lens Dodge of DJ Kennington. And with the different brake packages these cars run anymore, a lot of them need to be almost glowing red to really reach their maximum performance as we'll see a lot of cars out there with glowing rotors. Andrew Ranger really having to work hard right now to hold off Pete Shepard. So you can check the ticker across the top of the screen. Trayton Lapsovich leads Kevin Lacroix. This is a battle for third, and Weller goes around, and the real be number 61. And oh. around into him goes your race leader, Trayton Lapsovich was slowing up to avoid, and the back end went around on the quick wick Chevrolet. It was a hard hit. Glenn Stiers also spun, but Lapsovich caught contact with the rigid Ryobi number 61 of Weller. Bare flames out the exhaust means the car's not running. Okay, now it is. What on earth happened? Let's have a look. We're gonna be looking at the very bottom left of the screen. There goes Brent Weller spinning around. And Trayton's Stiers, and here comes Trayton. Like, well after the fact. Caution is out. And you can see he got in there and almost like fluid is down on the racetrack the way he spun. Wow, Trayton oh, Lapsovich. The caution was out, the caution was out. I know, but under caution, if you don't maintain caution speed, you fall, you blend. And the explanation being given that even though the yellow was already out, Trayton Lapsovich's spin will cost him all of those spots. We'll be back on TSN. Welcome back to Delaware Speedway. Kevin Lacroix is your new race leader after issues under caution for the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. And there you can see he will restart in the seventh position. Seven spot for Trayton Lapsovich. What a day. It'll be tough to come back from that. We are in the final stages. Nine Whoa! Contact with the 92 and a big hit for Trayton Lapsovich on the front stretch wall. That's a devastating hit against the inside wall for the 20. Of, I don't know. There was nobody really pushing him from behind. Let's see what happens here. And yeah. it looks like just side-to-side -side contact with the 92 of Lapsovich, and then the 17 of TJ Kennington got into the spinning number 20. Look at that hit. I can't say that I've ever seen that fierce a reaction to two cars touching side-to-side. -side. But Trayton Lapsovich, heavy impact with the inside concrete. Have another look from the overhead. It, it just went, as soon as they made that contact, it bounced off and rifled hard into that inside wall. Race after race, we talk about the inside wall. Jeff Lapsovich looking on from his pit stall to see what's going on with his son's number 20. The other car involved in that, Dexter Stacy, getting service on pit lane, but we can tell you, Trayton Lapsovich is okay. The window that is down on the 20. And there you can see a heavily damaged quick wick number 20 of Trayton Lapsovich back in the paddock area. So his race obviously done early. Heartbreak in what was a great series of races here at Delaware Speedway for the youngster. Longtime NASCAR Pinty Series official Mike Henning drives the safety car down pit road. We are back under green at Delaware. 
And it is Kevin Lacroix on the bumper to bumper dodge. He moves to the point. Andrew Ranger slots into second. LP Dumoulin just riding the driver with the most to lose out there alongside Brandon Watson. He just wants this race over with. There you can see side by side now three laps to go for the man from St. Eustache, Quebec, Kevin Lacroix. Can he win one on an oval here in 2021? He won an ICAR earlier on this year. Pete Shepard looking to salvage a win here in 2021. Give him something to be happy about in the offseason. Up in front, here comes Andrew Ranger to the inside. Ranger with a nose now up to the door. They make contact in one and two. Lacroix will give him space down low as Ranger goes to the top spot with just a lap and a half left to go. Down through three and four. They'll see the white flag this time at the strike. Beat Shepard now pressuring Kevin Lacroix. The best news for Andrew Ranger is that Shepard and Lacroix are fighting there for second. Look at the gap that Ranger's able to open up down the back straightaway for the final time. Through three and four, the 2021 season going to come to a close. And it's Andrew Ranger in the 51 winning the Pinty's Fall Bro. Yeah, Andrew Ranger, I love you, man. Awesome job. Woohoo! Celebrations in the pit area for the Rick Ware Racing Team. They won at Flamborough, and now they're winners here at Delaware Speedway. And the big winner on the day, the WeatherTech number 47, LP Dumoulin. When we return, we'll crown a winner and a champion. He's no stranger to victory lane. He's found his way there for the 30th time in his NASCAR Pinty Series career. Ranger gets it done here in the Pinty's Fall Brawl. Another feature win for him here tonight. Wow, what a drive for you tonight. you got to be super happy with that. Talk about the last few laps, Andrew. It was so close, but you got it done tonight. Oh, my God. You know, I want to thank my crew, my team, uh, my girlfriend. She's here tonight, my friends. Uh, awesome, you know. Uh, we work so hard. We have a problem in the first race. We fix it. Uh, we proved that we were fast in the second race and uh, last restart, you know, everything can happen with uh, almost a green-white checker and uh, I tried to play smooth and uh, Kevin make a little mistake in two corner and uh, I get him. So, uh, you know what, I'm so happy to all my crew, my team, it's been an excellent season and uh, I want to thank everybody. The fans here, thank you very much to be here tonight and uh, see you next year. Andrew Ranger picks it up, and he will finish off the season with the win here in the Pinty's Fall Brawl, guys. Getting his trophy, a kiss from his girlfriend, a pat on the back from spotter Joe Chisholm Jr. As we take a look at the final results here today. How about TJ Renamato with a top 10 finish on the lead lap? Good job, TJ. Another top 10 for Dexter Stacy as well. And there is the burnout from your series champion. He came into this final stretch of three races with an outside chance but lb dumoulin did everything he needed to do and he is burning it down <laughs> what you don't see is the crowd of people in victory lane right where the camera is shooting from an lb dumoulin this is a precision maneuver by the 47. well he's had a little bit of practice this is his third time he's been crowned champion here in the nascar pinty series so he's done this game before Wow, right up to the trophy. He definitely does know what he's doing. And here's how the points look at the end of the year. Andrew Ranger, by virtue of his win, second place in the points, eight markers back. Tagliani will have to be disappointed. 18 points back in fourth spot. Trayton Lapsovich, a solid rookie year, though, coming home fifth. He's taking his time to savor the moment and get that hat on because you want to see that championship hat as soon as he comes out. LP Dumoulin, for the third time, will wrap up the season as the NASCAR Pinty Series champion and up on that roof to celebrate for the third time. Yes! I've got to imagine the atmosphere here this weekend, Dave, was phenomenal. It was like nothing we've ever seen from a Pinty Series finale. It felt like a championship day here at Delaware Speedway. Tons of fans in the crowd, great weather, great racing on the track, and just an electric feeling. LP is coming down to congratulate and thank his team, this 47 bunch that worked so hard. 
high fives and hugs all around for this WeatherTech team. Yes, sir. Mini bars. <laughs> oh, that feels good. LP, you came into this weekend, you were trailing in the championship. By the end of this race, you were ahead in the championship. How did you manage the race? How did you approach it to secure this third title? Well, I mean, it was not easy, obviously, coming in the weekend. Uh, I'm not a family here about this track that much, but the team did a really good job to step back and then, you know, think about what we need to do and then improve the car all weekend long. And here we are at the end of the, at the end of tonight, we really had a good car. That WeatherTech Benmar car was awesome. So um, we kept digging all night long, uh, all weekend long, and I think uh, just being patient, but still intense, because we still had to fight all weekend long. So uh, super proud of my team. They did an outstanding job. My brother, my family, and obviously my wife, my kids gonna be here today, but uh, we won, we won. And then my sponsors, WeatherTech, Benmar, Everybody that helps me, my engine builder, everybody on the team, it's just outstanding. You think, okay, Tree, you don't get used to that. You know, you just want them all, and it's just amazing as a feeling. And we have people at home, actually, that couldn't be there this weekend because they're fighting big battles uh, against cancer right now. Bernie, never give up, my man, who think about you right now. You deserve that one, too. So it's amazing. And then uh, we're just, just going to keep digging. For sure, we'll celebrate tonight. Congratulations, L.P. Dumoulin, your 2021 NASCAR Pinty Series champion. And congratulations to the entire Dumoulin competition team. The Pinty's Fall Brawl on TSN has been brought to you by Quickwick, the world's number one fire starter. By Watson Building Supplies, Ontario's premier distributor of construction materials. By Markdom International, world-class injection molded products. And by Mopar. We built it, we know it. The championship trophy presentation to LP Dumoulin with Martin Gervais and Yannick Gervais from Olimel. What a season it has been for the man from 20 Vier, Quebec, LP Dumoulin. He finished with one win, but no shortage of stops at the front of the field in 2021. Four top fives, nine top tens, a 5.6 average finish. And Dave, how about this? There was 1,011 laps in this year's NASCAR Pinty Series. LP Dumoulin completed every one. The picture of consistency here in 2021, and that is what wins you a championship. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.